Hey, welcome back to Channel So the best uh, graphite, natural graphite stock in my opinion, or up there at least in top five, would be ITM reasons. Location, good capex, large scale, huge mine life, um, and decent entry price. So always look at, never look at this for your capex, because it will never, sometimes it's way out. Always look to here. So ITM. So in a nutshell, basically this company has these large deposits of natural graphite, which is not really in now for electric vehicles, because they've got plenty of supply around the world. Fast forward, when we slowly shift there, car by car getting made, solar panel by solar panel being put on roofs, charging station by charging station, when they slowly go electric vehicles, and they're going to need graphite to power them, because it's the anode of choice. And looks like it will be for years to come, even with sodium mine coming along later in the decade when they streamline sodium mine to get the cost down on sodium mine. So anyway, 50 year mine, no, this is like a 10 year mine life, and then they got these ones here, which would be like 50 year mine lives or more. Other thing I always preach is capex. If you don't have a, if you have a large capex, you're not going to get as many X's on the share price return. So... The key to getting a 20x return, which is very hard, would be buy a stock when the metal or the what they're mining isn't of f flavor. This was lithium. Um, didn't People didn't really want to spend a lot of money on lithium. Not huge demand. The demand came along. The supply was low, so the price went sky high. So this company also had a low capex, so near a capital city. If you're near a capital city, existing things, um, you're going to spend maybe $100 million on a given project. But if you're 500 kilometers away, that's going to times that by four or five to build the project because you're going to have to ship everything out to site. Mining camp, everything is just way more expensive. And therefore, you're going to have to raise more money, diluting the share price. So that's why Core Lithium has gone like this roughly a 20x or more when it gets to the high points is because lithium wasn't loved here. They were probably just drilling to confirm resources and they were near a capital city. That's where they're going like this. Um, that's the example. So ITM price isn't super, super low, but it's it could go lower or it could just stay around the same or it could go up and you might miss out on ever getting this price or rising interest rates. Um, who knows where the price will go, but I predict in the future, not financial advice, it will be quite a bit higher. So these guys, if I didn't say they're drilling now, drilling these out, they've already drilled them, they've hit graphite, they're just drilling more and more to confirm. Um, and basically, I know they have a low capex because they're right near Renascore, who've already done their studies, they've got to spend $140 million or something, Capital, 142 million, which is not 400 million, which will really dilute your share price. And then EBITDA, and that will make 110 million dollars. Take in mind, this is EBITDA before, when, if there's a shortfall in graphite, this EBITDA will probably double or something like that. I'm not sure, to lithium, the price of lithium went four times higher, five times higher, and these EBITDAs, this went crazy with lithium. So who knows, 2025, 2026, this EBITDA could perhaps change. This EBITDA is based on the price for the sale of the uh, given thing, which is natural graphite. So this EBITDA could change. Might not go like lithium. Might go a bit higher, but still decent at this EBITDA price. <clears throat> Take a mind, CXO had a decent EBITDA, and then it just went crazy with the lithium price. So RNU, it's already grown in my opinion. Yes, it can still go higher, but I see once once a company gets this billion dollars, oh yeah, they're gonna make four hundred million dollars a year. But it's not as if people are gonna rush out, pay four times what you paid to buy this company. It's just gonna trade sideways. It's more of a div dividend stock now, in my opinion, that will slowly grow as they reinvest. Um, it's either gonna pay it out to you in dividend or they're gonna keep the money and reinvest in streamlining their process, getting their price down, buying a new mine, you get the point. But the X's aren't going to go like this, in my opinion, from now on. And I'm pretty sure I'm correct as well. 
So ITM low 35 million. Uh, let's just go through recent dr this recent drilling report. So drilling it now. Um, two big projects, two big things as I showed you there. So that's our new seven hundred million dollar company. Uh, something like that, maybe six hundred million now. Six, yeah, whatever. Um, I think RNU got a bit of cash as well. So where were we back to here? ITM. So it's fairly say they'll have a similar capex to Renascore, meaning low. The mine life, once they drill and confirm these, probably going to be in bigger than Renascore. Could be wrong. I'm not sure. I know Renascore's got like 50 year mine life. But these guys will probably have the same, if not more. So existing power, they don't have to build a diesel power plant. There's South Australia is all on renewables. They can run fully off renewables. We've got battery. Elon Musk has bought his Tesla thing there. So yeah, they're not going to spend a lot of diesel money, etc. You get the point. Not going to have to build a power line for seventy million dollars. That adds up and dilutes your share price. So coming down, massive, massive, huge. Fifty years, fifty years. Um, yeah, it's another one of that. Dun, 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 dun. Even if they only drill off half what they expect here, it's going to be a huge mine life. So you always got to go on. Yeah, if they even make half of that, they're going to be good. They have the rare earths as well, which go into the motor of lithium mine battery. Sorry, the motor of electric vehicle. But they put that in hold for the graphite. And yeah, not much more I can say. Basically, when the graphite demand comes, like Tesla, BYD, CATL, get the prices down of vehicles even more, make them even better, so it's a no-brainer. So you're like, why would I buy this diesel car? I'm going to have to spend money on diesel when I get this better, faster car. And people are going to switch to electric. Um, yeah, they've got the solar panels on the roof, heaps of solar panels. They can charge at home. Um, it just makes sense to me. Not sure about you. So then everyone's like, oh, we need all the graphite now because it's cheap to buy. Get the graphite. And this company supplies it all. If not at today's prices, at a greater price. They do heaps of tons per years. And it's only 35 million now. So they might, who knows what happens. But really we're just waiting the years for the demand to come. And if the demand comes and you didn't buy in, you'll miss out. Um, probably overnight. No, not overnight, but if you didn't buy in beforehand. And also I like to buy in a year beforehand because... You get the 50% capital gains discount. Take in mind, these companies can peak. Like, people are in love with graphite or people in love with the share market. Rising interest rates crumble everything. Who knows, they go up and down. But I predict probably in three to five years, going to be worth a lot more unless something crazy happens like some other battery tech comes out of nowhere, which is very unlikely. Like, very unlikely to happen, in my opinion. So yes, one of my top five, if not top three, if not top two, graphite stock picks. Um, and I'll leave it at that. So ITM, if I compare anything against ITM in the natural graphite space, um, ITM normally comes out on top. And you could wait, maybe get it lower. If you get it at 20 cents, guess what? That's a 5x to a dollar. At 30 cents, it's a 3x, which is a lot of money, depending how much money you put in. Uh, that's just facts. Um, so let me know your thoughts. Take in mind, yeah, rising interest rates come. Interest rates rise. People have less money to spend. Therefore, they spend less. Therefore, people make less. And it's a returning cycle. Some companies go well. This company not making money, so you have to raise money, which is harder to do in tougher times. Um, but yeah come 2025, 2026, when they actually want to get into production, they're not going to raise 500 million. Um, it's only going to be a bit less, meaning they're not going to dilute the share price, meaning this will be <coughs> better than something they have to raise 500 million in the future. Um, just my opinion, CapEx kills X's on share price. Just remember that. Um, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. CapEx is share price return killer. Okay, that's it from me, and see you in the next video.